Yes! Dungeon changes! Og! Uh... Oh! Devour. Hey, Toll! I got something you can devour. While in combat, Zalatath tears open rifts that devours the essence of players. The rift unleashes its energy after 15 seconds, healing all enemies in combat. The rift collapses if it is dispelled, or players receive enough healing, granting all players players critical strike and maximum health. Oh, maximum health? What the fuck? You can devour these. Yeah. Uh, devour this. Yeah. The Okay, how does this work? The rift unleashes its energy after 15 seconds, healing all enemies in combat. Hopefully this is like not that big of a heal. The rips the rift collapses if it's dispelled. Is this a magic dispel? I wonder if it's gonna be a magic dispel. Sounds like sounds like it's gonna be a magic dispel. Where players receive enough healing, granting all the players critical second maximum help. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. Kind of like afflicted, yeah. Kind of like afflicted is what it kind of what it kind of reads like. Except the downside isn't that the that you have fifty percent reduced haste. <laughs> there is no downside actually. There's only an upside. Like <laughs> the downside, I guess, that the enemies get healed. I I hope that this isn't a large amount of healing. I think this is probably fine. Um, I guess that there could be. A, I, I hope they don't run into the same issue that Voidbound had. Where you would like move mobs and then the rift spawns and it's 40 yards away from you. That could probably be problematic. Well, it depends on how much healing. Okay, so say, say this is a small amount of healing. Say, say this is like a really small amount of healing. Like it's not that big of a deal, right? Hmm. I'll I'll refrain from giving a really strong opinion until I play it. I think that there's a world where this can be okay. I think that Blizzard's actually done a pretty decent job of making M plus affixes uh the new M plus affix is more tolerable. I think that they're close on Voidbound. I don't think that Voidbound's perfect still, but I think that they're getting kind of close with that one. So I'm I'm I don't really want to be like too overtly negative on something that we haven't necessarily tested fully. I do think that there's a chance that this could be okay. I do think that there's a chance that this could be kind of annoying. All right, Grimpa Toll. Rives physical damage vulnerability reduced from 20% to 10%. So this was the... These were the mobs in the first area that you would have to kill with the bombing run with the dragons because these would, like, insta-kill your tank. Rives damage reduced. These are good changes. Uh, Embril Umbrasis. Is this the first guy? Hold on. Let me... The surfers are down. Man. Grimpa Toll. I think this is the first boss. Skull Slayer's physical damage... Reduced and skull, skull splitter can now be blocked. Oh, yeah, this has to be it. Uh, you can actually cauterize skull splitter's physical damage as well for whatever reason it's coded as a, a bleed. So, hot tip Dragha Shadow, Bur Shadow Burn. This is the third boss. Um, increase the recast time of invocation of Shadow Flame. So, there's gonna be less tornadoes, I think, is what this means. Just in general, less tornadoes on the platform. The invocation of the Shadow Flame is not the ads, right? Hold on. Pulling up, pulling it up, making 100% sure. Invocation of Shadow Flame. Flames creates flame portals. Oh, okay. Uh, Flicking fire damage to all players within 10 yards. It's This is the ad, actually. I actually think that they need to reduce the amount of tornadoes that are on this platform. So this is you're getting less ad spawns, which is actually nice. I think that I think that the pace of this fight was just like too fast. You're getting too many ads, and you have too many tornadoes. So I think that uh, this is fine. I think that I would also reduce the amount of tornadoes around the platform. Aerodax crushes physical and shadow damage reduced. This is fine. I think that the uh, the biggest thing that they should be looking at on this last boss is first off, there's too many tentacles. They probably need to have the amount of tentacles, or even like cut in a third the amount of tentacles that you're having spawned on this. And I actually wouldn't mind a slight AoE nerf or like a grace period on the circles. There's like a couple of things that they can do to make this boss a little bit better. Depleted anima seeds no longer have an interact condition. These are the two checkpoint nuts. Uh, the anima seeds at the beginning and the nuts at the end. Uh, these are the two checkpoint things. I suspect that the wall is going to still have an interact condition then considering that it's not talked about at all. It might not actually, but uh, so 
now basically everybody can unlock the checkpoint, which is a good change. Um, I think that that's uh, in general pretty solid. Harvester Spirit Bolt damage reduced. Ward cast time increased. Okay, so Spirit Bolt is uh, the cast from the mobs that are at the very beginning that stand with the Droman guy. It's fine. Defenders are the mobs that they've recently changed. Mist Ward is that big purple ground effect if you've been watching any beta runs. Uh, it's like a new ground effect. Cast time increased on that. It, that's solid. So basically that, that ground effect is like large and it uh, makes the mobs take less damage while they're standing inside of it. And uh, obviously pushes melee out of melee range. It's like a pretty stupid mechanic. So so increasing the cast time on that's nice. Ingram Malak force compliance recast increased repulsive visage recast increased. So what what does this mean? This means that there's more time to do more damage to the mini boss and you're going to be taking less ticking damage because because the repulsive visage isn't going to happen until or the force compliance isn't going to happen until later on okay that's fine this is a good change i i think that this fight this fight was one that was like really long because and like you you were having to save lust for it there was not really much of an option um but by delaying the cadence on force compliance and repulsive visage i think that these are these are Fairly solid. Ooh, force compliance is at the the burn phase. Oh, dude. Okay, I thought that this was. I thought this was the. Okay, so maybe a longer burn. Coalescent poison range reduced. I think that this is the large circle that they've added to the boss. I think that this is one of the new abilities that they added to Tradova. Um, basically, she puts this big ass circle <laughs> on the ground, and melee were out of actually actually forced out of melee range of this, and tanks were forced out of melee range of this mechanic. So I think that they're allowing you to continue to hit the boss. Arakara Avanax, which is the first boss, is now reset if she's pulled off her platform. Voracious bites damage, vulnerability reduced from 100% to 50%. Voracious bite can now be blocked. Increased cast time on alerting shrill. Uh, adjusted the spawn locations to be more consistent. I would not hate a damage like HP nerf on the the crawlers. Um, I think that these are all pretty good changes, just straight across the board. I, there was a, basically a strat right now where you're kiting the boss completely around the platform the entire time. Um. Also, this alerting shrill. So basically, there's two mechanics. There's gossamer burst and alerting shrill, and both of them do an insane amount of AOE. And you're pressing defensive where your group is dying. So it's probably probably fine. Increase, increasing the recast time. It's in, it's interesting to me that they continue to affect uh, cast timing on a bunch of these abilities. Adjusting the spawn locations of starved crawlers to be more consistent. I mean, these were, this were really fucking annoying. I think that they maybe could have... Uh, especially if you can't take her off her platform now, what you were doing is like you weren't killing any of the ads and you were just kiting her around permanently. I think that maybe they could reduce the amount of HP that some of these ads have uh, to allow you just a little bit of an easier time. Anub the cat. Okay, so this is the second boss, and uh, basically you were forced to have 40 plus yard kicks on some of your people because the web mages would spawn in the middle of like nowhere during the Eye of the Swarm cast. Now, no longer spawning during the Eye of the Swarm, it's a great change. Uh, really good for comps that have multiple melee, or like all melee, for example. Um, very very good change just in general, I would, I would say. City of Threads, Fangs of the Queen... Pacing of abilities reduced, remove dark paranoia and shadow stump uh, shunpo from the encounter. Uh, pacing. Okay, so Fangs of the Queen is like the council fight where they go and like high five one another occasionally. Uh, this fight was very fast. I I tend to agree. The pacing of the abilities being reduced is is a good change of this. I felt like it was it was hard to tell what the fuck was going on sometimes because the abilities just came out so fast. It felt like you were fighting. Like it, it was, it was an incredibly fast fight. It was like faster than a raid boss uh, with some of the pacing that was going on in this fight. Dark paranoia. I know what that is. Like that's a that's a like a circle that if anybody else is standing inside of it, then you get feared. I actually don't know what Shadow Shenpo is. I, I it might be the thing where she like dashes behind you. Um, and then like it, there was like a weird bug where she was like meleeing players. But I actually, 
I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I don't know what this ability is. That that fight has so many mechanics that it's really hard to tell what this ability actually is. Edna, seismic smash is damage redu reduced. I think that this is one of the hardest dungeons by far. So this is Stone Vault. Um, this is one of the hardest damage uh, bosses by far. Sm seismic sla smash damage being reduced is, is nice. It's a dot. She jumps on people and puts a dot on them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I didn't... Dude, I just, it's one of those things that just, like, there's so many mechanics going on, I just actually didn't even know what that was. Skarmorak. Crystalline Smash can now be blocked. Dude, there's so many abilities that weren't able to be blocked. That's so weird. Master Machinist. Flaming Scraps duration reduced. Igneous Hammer damage reduced. Blazing Crescendo now is a pre-cast visual on the Lava Waves directions. This is a fight that... Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. This is a fight that I would describe has like a really players have a really hard time of being able to actually tell what's going on on this boss just in general. Um, it's like I, I wouldn't be able to tell you like whenever we're walking up to the boss, I wouldn't even be able to tell you exactly how the fight is supposed to to operate. It's one of those fights where like the only way you could even learn how to do it is literally just by playing the fight. So I, I think that what they probably should do is remove the the cast from the sp the speaker altogether. I think that that ability could just be completely removed. Um, so what did they say they did? Flaming scraps duration is reduced. So there's a dot that they put on players occasionally. Igneous hammer damage reduced. That's a tank ability. Um, and then blazing crescendo now is a precast visual. So that's uh, this 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 ability right here, where the boss is dragging the box towards the middle. Uh, it shoots out these waves out of the middle of it. I am spinning my camera because I'm just pissed that I died. But it shoots waves after the, the box explodes. And it always goes towards like the entrance, like the far side, and then both the, the right and left. But like if you if you don't know that in advance, it's like literally impossible to actually be able to tell that. I think that this I think that this fight could use a, a bit more uh, touch up in terms of visual clarity. I think that also the cast is very, very annoying on that fight because she 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 jumps so far away and like having to kick her over uh, having to kick the mini boss over and over again is like Brutal. All pretty good changes, though. I'm not going to complain about any of those. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing this new FX. People are, I mean, I don't know. You guys, you guys are in chat saying it's going to be similar to Afflicted. I don't know if it's similar to Afflicted. Maybe it will be. We'll see. Uh, the dungeon changes are all good changes, yeah. I think that they can go a little bit harder on some of these changes. No Dawnbreaker changes yet. But uh, I suspect that... Dawnbreaker's gonna get hit at some point because that dungeon needs uh, a bit of looking at. And yeah, 